Your phone can be an indispensable tool when traveling internationally, but how do you ensure that you actually have service while you're abroad? In this video, I'm going to break down five possible strategies for staying connected while you're away. I'll give some tips on which ones I prefer and even point you towards some apps that you want to be sure to download before you leave for your trip. One thing is certain, paying international roaming fees can be a disaster. If you don't plan to implement any of the tips I share in this video, please do this one thing. I once forgot to do it and it cost me darn near a thousand dollars. Turn off roaming. Turning off roaming will kill all cellular data use entirely when you're out of the country. Don't forget this. And now that I've saved you nearly a thousand bucks, please go ahead and hit that like button so YouTube will know that I did something today. Here are five viable strategies that will enable you to use your phone while traveling internationally. There's no one right answer, but different situations could necessitate different strategies. Strategy number one, Wi-Fi or bust. You could probably figure out what this means, but this strategy is essentially only using your phone when you're able to connect to Wi-Fi. This will be the cheapest option by far because you won't need to pay for anything. Basically, just keep your phone in airplane mode the whole trip and then use Wi-Fi when it's available. You'll be able to communicate with people back home using apps like iMessage, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and any other communication platform that functions via Wi-Fi. My first couple of times to Europe and Asia, I only used my phone when I was able to connect to Wi-Fi. And here's a couple of things I would say you need to look out for with this strategy. So does your hotel or Airbnb have good Wi-Fi? That's a consideration if that's what you're planning to do. You'll need to be really good at planning ahead. Who do you need to communicate with during the day? And will you even be able to? Personally, this approach can be very freeing because it allows you to be very present. Fewer distractions. You're not doom scrolling. You're living your life. But it's becoming harder and harder. If you don't want to have to rely on Wi-Fi alone, I would contact your carrier. Strategy number two is to see what your provider can do for you. Talk to your provider and see what options they have for you. For example, many providers like AT&T, Verizon, etc., have some form of plan that works really well for short-term international trips. For example, I've used Verizon's Travel Pass many, many times. This program is a solid option in my opinion for someone traveling short term through a long list of countries. And at only $10 per day, you get unlimited data, calls, and texts. And you only pay for what you use. So if you only know that you'll need this for a day or two, or there are certain days of your trip, you know you'll always be in Wi-Fi range, you can just switch your phone into airplane mode before the start of the next 24 hour period. And look, not all providers have good options, 10 bucks per day isn't exactly cheap, but it is a way to relatively easily maintain some continuity and to get to continue to use your phone and your phone number abroad with minimal effort and far less expense than if you were paying for roaming. Strategy number three is to check out international specific plans. This strategy doesn't always make sense, but in certain cases, it could make sense to change providers. Admittedly, this strategy is only viable if you're traveling longer term, like a month or more, and you plan to visit multiple locations. Services like Google Fi give you unlimited data, calls, and texting in over 200 locations around the world for around $65 per person per month on the unlimited plan. And then there's price breaks for families. Allie and I actually used this service when we traveled full time for six months, and it worked like a charm. Pretty affordable, all things considered, and getting coverage as we moved between 17 different countries was insanely easy. It doesn't come without cons though. First of all, it's not fun to change providers. And the other thing is, you will get kicked off the plan after six months if you're still international, which is insanely stupid. In our case, our phones actually just stopped working the last couple of weeks of our trip in terms of data. So we just became Wi-Fi people. I think this plan is ideal for someone traveling internationally for anywhere between one and six months. Honestly, I wish I had known about it the first time that I visited Europe for 30 plus days. Strategy number four, buy a local SIM card. Likely the most economical option on this list that still allows you to use your phone is to purchase a SIM card that will enable you to use your phone in the place you're visiting. 
A local or single country SIM card is typically attached to a local carrier and will usually only work in the country that it's purchased in. Most of the time you could buy a SIM card at the airport or 7-Eleven or other stores, newsstands, vendors of all types. This option can often be the cheapest, offer great speeds because you're working with a local network, but it can be difficult to track down what you're looking for. And it's highly recommended that you purchase as close to the source as possible so you don't buy a fake or a scam SIM. Strategy number five, get an international eSIM. Unlike the local SIM option, which usually requires purchasing that physical SIM card, there's another option out there, buying an international eSIM. What is an eSIM? An eSIM is basically a virtual or digital version of a traditional SIM card. And thanks to providers like Olafly, you can get a data plan online and use it immediately without having to put in a physical card, go to a physical store, or have a confusing conversation in a language that you don't understand. Basically, you'll pick your plan, pay for it, and then they'll send you a QR code to scan and you're in business. Or they also offer a mobile app. If you have a phone with two SIM slots, like a lot of iPhones and Androids these days, Olafly allows you to keep the SIM from your home country. In terms of pricing, this might be your best option if you're traveling 30 days or less and you don't want the headache of changing carriers. 10 days in Europe would cost 34 bucks to have service anywhere in the EU. 10 days via something like Verizon's Travel Pass would cost $100. If you decide to pull the trigger on Olafly, you can use the code away together to get a discount on your purchase. Those are the five strategies. Which one is right for you? I would love it if you would comment below and tell us what you're thinking about doing. Before you leave for your trip, remember, turn off roaming. And oh, by the way, make sure you've got the right apps downloaded before you leave. You can check out this video where I break down the eight essential travel apps you need before you depart. Thanks so much for watching. Happy travels.